talking about a couple right now because they're kind of far off. Um, one's on Thursday, November 18th at 7 p.m. It's called the Mayflower. Um, it's been over 400 years, just over 400 years, since the Mayflower uh, set sail for the New World. And Jenny Warner will be joining us. She's a historian and a uh, genealogy speaker. And she's going to tell us about the 102 people that made that journey to the New World. Um, she also has some tips on uh, tracing genealogy back to the Mayflower in case, in case you go back that far. <laughs> I don't think I do, but anyway. Um, on Sunday, November 21st, our Arts Alive concert is called Stuck in the 60s for Life, uh, which kind of explains itself. It's a lot of great music from the 60s. Either you remember it if you're as old as I am, or you just like some of those tunes that you hear that you've heard through the years that are from the 60s. Tom Maloof is the performer. And um, like I said, that will be on the 21st of November. And you can sign up for those on our website. Now tonight, we have one of our returning favorites, Chef Susan Maddox. We love her. She's, she's always great. Sadly, we're not with her in person, but she is still going to demonstrate how to make some cozy comfort foods now that we're into the autumn season. She's going to be making a soup, uh, a main dish, and a dessert. Um, and um, I don't know if you heard Mike earlier say the uh, recipes are on the website, but if for some reason you don't get them, you can contact us and we'll, we'll get them to you. Um, if you've never seen Susan before, not only is she a great chef, but she's lots of fun. Um, never a dull moment. The only sad thing is there's no samples. <laughs> and, and, and Janet, I am working on smell a vision I'm trying oh, very hard oh, to work on. Make us yes. a bit more. We can smell right? it. Smell a vision. Smell a no, vision. We want to taste it. Okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully, right. when you're here, yes, uh, give us a demonstration. It's in person, and we can enjoy you, your company, and your food. But I'm looking forward to the demonstration. And like I said, I already I got the recipes. In fact, well, I'll talk about it afterwards. And if there are questions, they should hold them. They should put them in chat for the end. Is that um, yes? What we're doing okay. So if you have any questions, just type them in, and and uh, Chef Maddox will get to them at the end. So please welcome Chef Susan Maddox. Thank you. Hi everybody. Um, if you didn't know, it is fall. Fall is here, and um, tonight I'm making again comfort cozy, or as I call it, warm and mushy. I am all about, I love fall. Welcome to a flannel shirt and, you know, um, cozy food stuff that one, one bowl, one pot. Um, so today I'm really kind of spicing things up. I'm making a chorizo and spinach soup. The great thing about this recipe is if you're not a big chorizo fan, I could go ahead and use just ground beef with this and um, add some uh, spices to it. I could add um, ground turkey or um, my daughter who does not eat meat, I just go ahead and add some zucchini and squash and um, make this great dish and everything. So again, we're going to start with the chorizo and spinach soup that has chickpeas and some vegetables in it. Then I'm making a pork ragu. Now, I know there's, you know, everybody's doing different types of beef dishes, you know, beef bourguignon and beef stroganoff and me, welcome to having pork, pork shoulder, you know, we used it all through the summer. And now, now with it being fall, it's great to make it and serve it over polenta. Polenta to me is an empty palate and it takes on any great dish. So I can put my pork on in the morning, sear it off, throw it in my crock pot and let it cook all day long. Um, and, you know, the house smells great and everything you're going to see with the spices and getting that seared off. And it's great for the next day. So if I'm, you know, kind of trying to get ahead, I might have my oven with three different things and pots cooking all at 300 degrees. So then when it comes time for the week, all I have to do is cook some pasta or make some polenta. I have a roasted chicken going. I have some 
ragu pork and maybe some beef and all three things are slow cooking in my oven at 300 degrees and then I'm set for the week. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm all about a great dessert. I know we have Halloween candy hanging out at our house, but I have made a pear and cranberry cobbler. And right now pears are at the peak. Um, uh, my in-laws have a pear tree on their farm. The farm has been in my husband's family over a hundred years. The pear tree's 40 years old. So we went and picked pears and we're using pears and cobblers and making, um, you know, we um, canned some pears and everything. So it really got me inspired to um, have some fun with some cranberries. And the great thing is I can make this ahead of time. As you can see, mine's done on the counter there, and I'm going to show you how to make one. But um, I also can go ahead and make the raw cobbler and throw it in my freezer and then bake it at the holiday. So I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for joining me again tonight. Uh, we are doing comfort cozy food. And please remember to put all your questions in the chat and we will be back at the end of the video. Everybody, Chef Susan Maddox. Guess what? Comfort cozy. It's getting cold outside, so I have three great recipes today that will warm up your kitchen. So today I am making a wonderful chorizo chickpea soup. I'm going to make a pork ragu to serve on top of polenta, and then we're going to finish with a great cranberry and pear cobbler. So first things first. I'm going to turn my pan on and let's talk about chorizo. I am using a traditional pork chorizo. There are vegetarian ones out there. There's turkey, chicken. There's so many great ones out there that you could use. Or you could go ahead and add um, more carrots and celery to this and make it vegetarian. Like I always say, your house, your rules. So we won't need to add oil to this pan because the chorizo has a lot of oil in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this into my pan and let this cook. Make sure my burner's on. And go ahead and I'm going to let that cook. While that's cooking, I have a towel underneath my board so then my board won't move. I have onion and carrot that we're going to go ahead and chop. So I have my uh, chef knife and I'm going to go ahead and dice my onion. So I've cut the onion in half so you can see the root is here and the onion is clean. I'm cutting towards the root for it to stay together so you can see I've cut towards my root and now I have my knife and I'm coming across. You can hear our chorizo start cooking. So down we go. Down and then you're going to get to a part of the onion that gets top heavy so we're going to turn that and go ahead and cut around. So all we have to do is throw away the root, okay? So we have our onion and let the chorizo cook. So I'm gonna take my carrot, cut it in half, I've washed it, I'm all set, ready to go. Better keep an eye on it so we don't set off the smoke detector. Welcome to Mike. Michael, come see what is going on. Michael's in the kitchen today with me. Nice looking chorizo. Oh, the smell is wonderful. Let's turn it down a little bit because, again, we don't want to set off the smoke detector. So we have our onions, and now we're going to go ahead and cut our carrots. Now, like I said before, if you choose to, you could add more vegetables to this and skip the chorizo and use wonderful Mexican spices. I'm going to turn the exhaust on just in case. Just in case. Okay. And way down so you're all set. Okay. And there we go. Oh, it's looking good. I'm going to add my onion in. Get my onion going. Oh, I love this smell. Chorizo in the morning or in the afternoon. Chorizo with eggs. Oh, wonderful. So, we'll turn that back on. So the great thing about this is I can make this in a pot. I can finish it in my um, oven. I can go ahead, start it in a pot, put it in my crock pot. 
I know the recipe calls for jalapenos, but Michael and I, welcome to the growers that we are, we went ahead and grew a bunch of different chilies. Okay, so I'm going to use one of our homegrown ones, right? Homemade soup, homemade chilies. Oh, the smell is wonderful. And with this, the spices are already in the chorizo, so we don't have to worry about having, you know, to purchase a bunch of different spices. So I'm going to go ahead, cut my chilies. These aren't as hot as you think. So I'm just going to go ahead, cut these up. Start over. Great color. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it looks great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, when? let's add our tomatoes. I want to add the tomatoes because, as you can see, Michael, do you want to come look? Sure. As you can see, we have this great flavor and great fun. Now we can add these tomatoes to help clean the bottom of our pan. Okay, so we see how wonderful. Now all that great flavor is in our tomatoes. Are you also, because you're adding that tomato, diced tomato or tomato product per se to that, you're also kind of getting rid of that canned tomato taste and getting kind of a roasted tomato. Like you do tomato paste or tomato puree, those kind of things. Is that correct? Yes. You always want to cook off, um, cook your tomato product first because you're going to see in our next recipe how we're going to cook that and get that um, can or acid taste out. So we're going to let that cook. I know the recipe calls for dry rosemary, but we have beautiful fresh rosemary outside. So I'm going to chop up my rosemary. So just to recap, we had the chorizo in the pan. I did not add oil to it because you saw that it does give off quite a bit of oil. We went ahead, we cut our onion, then we added it to our chorizo, then we added our carrots. Next, we put in the chilies to get those going, and then we added in our tomato product. So the wonderful thing is, this is kind of more like a ragu right now. The flavor looks great, the tomatoes are cooking, we're going to add in our chicken stock. Do you use chicken stock or pork stock or veggie stock or water, I guess, as well, sure? Definitely. Can I make a comment about the fresh to dry herbs ratio? Is that okay? Of course. Welcome. So whenever you have a list of calls for three teaspoons of fresh basil or rosemary, any kind of herb, three teaspoons of fresh, you would, and you don't have the fresh, in place of that, you would use one teaspoon of dry. So there's a good ratio. is three parts fresh to one part dry, no matter what that is. So a third um, the amount if you're using dry over fresh. Yes. Here we go. So we're going to get, I have a pork shoulder. I am going to do this for my second recipe, the pork ragu. Okay? So we want to get... It's seasoned, ready to go. We're going to turn our pan on. And this one, we need to put oil in because we want to get this great sear. We're making a ragu. Now, I know the recipe calls for cutting it into three pieces, but because the way the bone is in my piece, I picked up this beautiful pork shoulder, the way the bone is in my piece, I'm going to go ahead and leave it whole. I know. If I do leave it whole, it's going to take longer to cook. Don't panic. I have some already ready for you. So you will see a finished product. So with our salt and pepper on, I can take my tongs, pick this up, and put it in to my pan. It's kind of like it fits. Perfect. Okay. So let's set this over here. Make sure we leave these tongs off to the side. And now we can salt and pepper this side. Okay, salt, pepper. Very simple. We want to make sure our pan is nice and hot. And we are going to sear all sides. Okay, so here's our soup. Beautiful simmer. We're going to wait to put our um, chickpeas in there. Uh, 
for it to come up to a simmer. So you can hear my pan starting to talk to me now. Well, to make this ragu, we have pork stock, and I could use beef or chicken. Let me move this over here. We have tomato paste. Like our other one, we're going to go ahead and um, cook that. We have hand diced tomatoes. We have our onion. I can hear Michael saying, move that over, I can't see. We have onion, we have garlic, I have beautiful bay leaves from my bay leaf bush, red wine. You know my um, theory on cooking with wine. Please make sure it's a wine that you will drink. Cook with something that you enjoy. I have rosemary and thyme. We have our other ingredients that we're going to make our polenta. But let's get this pork cooking first. Okay? So, while the pork is cooking, let it go ahead, sear, and get beautiful. Okay? We want a beautiful golden sear on this. We want the pan to be talking to you. Okay? While it's talking to us for our ragu, we want to go ahead and cut our onions fine. Because then we can pull this pork out and there's no work to this. We can just go ahead and serve on our beautiful polenta. So just like before, I have my onions already cleaned, cut in half, and I'm cutting towards the root and then I came down. So now I can just go ahead and cut my beautiful onions. And the great thing about um, doing this is I'm using ingredients that I might already have at home. Uh, buy a bag of onions, buy a bag of carrots, you know, things that um, are readily available. So, here we go. Here's some more onions. Make sure our knife is nice and sharp. Come across and down, ready to go. And I know it seems like a lot of onion, but we have a big pork shoulder. And we've got garlic. So we have six cloves of garlic to put in. I know. So let's take our tongs, because I can start smelling it. So I'm going to turn my pan so it's readily available. Don't you love my facial expression? Here we go. Look at that sear. Okay, we have a great sear and everything, so we're going to let that keep searing. We're starting to simmer here in our pot, so I can go ahead and add my chickpeas. So Michael, just to recap, here's our beautiful soup. The tomatoes are cooking, the chorizo. This one, Michael and I like a lot because this is quick and easy. We have a can of chickpeas that we washed and drained. We've got some canned tomatoes at home, some chorizo. This is very simple, hearty filling. Over here we have our pork, and as you can see, it fits nice inside that, inside that pan. I have a beautiful sear. So I'm gonna go back, leave it alone, and keep cutting some more onions. Yeah. I like making the pork ragu say Saturday or Sunday because I can make it, I can sear it, put it in my crock pot, and then I can make little containers and um, have it for during the week. So I could make the polenta that day, we served it with pasta and everything. So it's a great, you get to have it on the weekend, and then it's wonderful for leftovers. Um, Michael and I kind of like it the next day. You know, not that it's not good the first day, but after it's Saturday and we heat it up as leftovers, the smell is amazing. Okay? So, you can see I've got a lot of onions. I'm going to take my pork. And when you're searing, you always want to sear all sides. Okay? So now, we're searing on our one side. So, top and bottom are seared. Now I turned it and I'm searing it on the one side. So onions are set. Here is my garlic. So I'm going to go ahead and um, you can purchase garlic already minced. That's up to you. Me, I like to buy the whole clove and then go ahead and I'm going to slice mine. 
Um, instead of mincing it, I'm going to slice this and get this ready to go into my pot. Okay? So for our cooking of our pork, we want to make sure that we don't have any, you know, burnt pieces or anything. So two seconds, let me get this. I got a lot of garlic. We're going to go ahead and turn this so you can see all sides are seared. And the great thing is I have beautiful control on this. And this technique is with any pot roast or any type of meat that you're going to go ahead and braise. You want to sear all sides to hold those juices in. We're going to go ahead and take it out. I'm going to grab a plate. We're going to take it out, and then we can saute our vegetables, okay? So, here is our beautiful pork, and then you can see, okay, then you can see in my pan here that I have no, I'll come to you, Michael, that I have no burnt ends, okay? So, what does that mean? Bring the pan over. Hear that sizzle? Oh, to me, great smell. I don't have a lot of oil in there, so I can go ahead, nothing's burnt, and my pork is over here, so I can get these onions going. I have two bay leaves, uh, fresh bay leaves. I'm gonna go ahead and crack them and put them in to get the flavor going. Okay, I have thyme and rosemary to add to this. Okay, I'm using fresh. Like I said, you know, I know it's cold outside, but I still have beautiful um, fresh herbs uh, to use. And the rosemary smells great, if you were wondering. So, go ahead, pull your thyme, pull down. Get this beautiful thyme in here. And we have two acids. So we have our tomato and we have our wine. Me, I always like to add my tomato product first. Okay? That is tomato paste. Tomato paste goes in. Okay? Because I want to, like Michael said before, we want to get that wonderful roasted flavor. I wish television was working because you could smell beautiful chorizo going. We've got our pork. So we have our tomato paste and we want this to go ahead and cook. So I'm going to set this off to the side and let it cook. I don't have a high flame on it. Like I said, I have my meat over here roasting. I have my thyme and my rosemary. The onions and garlic are cooking. So again, instead of cutting my pork into three pieces, I know this is going to take longer to cook. The great thing is I can make it early in the day, let it cook. The house will smell great all day and everything. So I have the tomato paste in. Now I'm cutting my onions and garlic are in the pan with the tomato paste. So. Here's a rough chop. Oh, again, wish you guys were here. Okay, Michael, you have to see this. To me, I love this part. So remember, we took our beautiful pork out. There's our chorizo cooking. But see how it's not burnt in the bottom? Now, remember, isn't this kind of clever? We're using the other half of those diced tomatoes. So, again, let's move this out of the way. We clean the bottom of our pan. Okay? Look at that wonderful tomato mixture. Well, let's talk wine. I have a beautiful burgundy wine. It's a wine that I will serve with dinner but you always want to make sure when you're cooking with wine or any alcohol, it's something that you will drink. It's going to reduce. So if it's something that A has gone bad or B is something that you don't care for, this is going to reduce 
and this, you know, I paid how much for my pork, I want to make sure. So you could use a nice burgundy, a nice box wine, or you could use yeah. a big jug of wine, but what you're saying is no matter what kind of wine that you use, red wine, it's something that it has a nice palate, because if you don't like the flavor in the raw state, it's not going to get better in the cooked state. So that flavor will yeah. linger through that. So it could be an expensive box wine or a jug wine, but it still has to be tasty as well. So, Michael, I'm so sorry you went away, but could you come and look at this? I want to show the rag, the um, mixture that is in the bottom. Our beautiful pork that we cooked, we seared it, then we put our onions and all of our goodness, our onions, then our um, garlic, tomatoes, that extra juice, the garlic, the tomatoes, all that wonderful flavor is in there. And now I can pour my stock over top. So you're braising this, correct? Is what yes. thought is? Yes. Covered so, by a quarter to two thirds. Yes. So now we give it a little wiggle because remember all those onions and everything at the bottom? So we give it that little wiggle and now it's covered. Okay? So we're going to hand this off to Michael. He's going to put it in a 350 degree oven and we'll see it probably three to four hours. I know what you're thinking, Susan, this is going to be a funny afternoon. We get to be with you for three to four hours. Well, I would love to say yes, but welcome to our video. So we're going to move this stuff out of the way. So, the soup is cooking lovely. I'm going to take my spinach. It's up to you. Take my spinach, set it off to the side, and go ahead and chop it or leave the whole leaves in. This is for our soup. So, here we go. And the great thing is the soup doesn't take long to cook because of the wonderful chorizo is flavored and ready to go. So we've added our spinach. And we're going to go ahead and let that cook. Okay. So the chorizo soup is practically done. Again, you saute your chorizo, add your onion, your carrot, your peppers. You can add the tomatoes, we deglaze the pan, leaving the chorizo in there. And then we added, we had our tomatoes deglazed, then we added our stock, our chickpeas. Once the uh, broth, the stock got uh, simmering, add the chickpeas, let it cook, come together, and then we can add our spinach. Right now, we have the pork in the oven. Well. I would like to make some polenta for you today. I picked up a package of polenta. There's quick polenta and there's coarse polenta. So I have this here and I have my knife to cut some scallions. Instead of adding parsley to my polenta, I am going to go ahead and add some scallions. So with polenta, polenta is cornmeal and it's a wonderful dish that you can use as a side dish, you can use it as an entree. Sometimes I make it as an entree for my kids and just put some uh, sauteed veggies and some tomato sauce on top and everything. So, there we go. I have some butter and I have some Parmesan cheese. So with this one, once your water has come up to a simmer, now do I need to use water? I could use that beautiful braising liquid that I have for my pork. I could use um, a different type of uh, stock and everything. So my soup looks beautiful. So I'm going to, while I, instead of waiting for my water, I'm going to go ahead and scoop some of this goodness. So you need to adjust the seasoning if it needs to be, and do you even need salt or anything to it, or pepper, of course? Michael, do you want me to come to you? Look at how warm, you can see the steam coming off. Warm and hearty. And like I said, you could add more veggies to it, 
or different beans. Sometimes I've added pinto beans to this. It's a great cozy, comfy little uh, dish there. It is. So, with our pork in the oven, now we need to make polenta. So, with our polenta, I have our scallions, I have our cornmeal, and our water, again, don't watch a watch, don't watch a pot simmer. So, we're going to cut this open, and again, coarse cornmeal is going to take about 20 minutes. Instant polenta is going to take about two to three. So, we're going to go ahead and have our water, and we are going to add in our polenta, our cornmeal, okay? So the great thing about cornmeal is it's an empty palate. Sometimes I add uh, sweet potatoes to it. Sometimes I add borosan cheese to it. But I always whisk back and forth. And you're going to look at it and say, oh my gosh, it's not going to come together. I'm going to add my scallions now to help give flavor to my water. And a lot of people are concerned about, you know, adding more. This is like making oatmeal, okay? So when you're making oatmeal, you know how you're concerned, oh my gosh, I should add a little bit more, add a little bit more. Well, that's not us. We're going to go ahead and let this cook. Well, I want to share with you, I cooked my pork, and this is a piece that I have done, okay? It is beautiful. You see that wonderful liquid in there and everything, and how dark with the burgundy it got, okay? So this is my piece of pork. So, our polenta is already starting to bubble. I have a wonderful plate. Let me move this out of the way. Okay. See how our polenta is already starting to thicken? Back and forth. Okay. And we want to add our butter. I'm using unsalted butter. I'm putting the whole thing in just like that because it's going to melt so fast and then I have beautiful Parmesan and Asiago cheese as you can see shaved so it's getting thicker I'm just going to add half in and the great thing is I can have my mixture ready or my ragu ready and then I can make my polento or my pasta as you can see, we just added that to it. I'm using a quick pot or a quick polenta because, welcome to all of you, we're only here for a short time. So, when you're looking at this, you want to make sure, okay, you want to make sure that the grains mm, are cooked, ready to go salt of course I love cracked black pepper in mine and I'm gonna add a little more cheese because who doesn't love cheese so and like I said I have finished this with Boris on cheese so are you guys ready Michael are you ready 100% yum We take this, put some polenta on our plate. Could you take this and just form it into, put it like on a tray and let it solidify and maybe cut it up and do that as well? Yes, we toast could it. serve it warm, we could toast it. Then I have my beautiful pork. Sorry, it's falling apart. That's a good problem, right? That means it's nice and tender. See how tender this is? Okay, and put a little bit of liquid, some of our braising liquid, that'd and be, there you go. It'd be nice in a bowl, not on a plate, but even in a bowl would be yummy, or other veggies and stuff. Right. And so we have a wonderful soup. We have a great entree. Let's talk dessert. 
okay? So for our dessert with our two wonderful dishes, we are going to make a pear and cranberry cobbler. I have beautiful red pears that I'm using today, dried cranberries, and we're going to make a crisp. We're going to take half of our brown sugar, or three-fourths of our brown sugar, put it into a bowl, thank you Michael, and put the other part into the other bowl. We have our flour, three-fourths of the recipe has, because I measured it together, so you'll see you have your mixture up top for your pears and then your mixture for your crumble at the bottom. So we have our flour, brown sugar, flour, brown sugar. Cinnamon goes in with the pears and a little bit of lemon juice. Okay? This bowl here is our brown sugar, flour, old-fashioned oats, and we will cut our butter up. Okay, thank you, Michael. We will cut our butter. So, this one I love, simple, easy. We're going to take this, and I'm just making for two. You have your dish. As you can see over here, if Michael hasn't already moved the camera, I have one already made for you. So, I am taking this dish and I'm buttering my ramekin. Okay, butter your dish. And now, let's talk pears. We have our pears. We're going to cut the bottom. Cut the bottom. Down. And down. So then, I take my ice cream scoop, and I can take the seeds out. Isn't that easy? So much easier. Now, it's up to you. To peel or not to peel? Well, if you didn't know, I am married to Chef Michael Maddox. He loves to peel the pears, and I don't. So, since I'm making it today, I'm not going to peel. Now, we have our pears. Always do cut side down. So, let's move this out of the way. Here's our ramekin. Here's our bowl with the sugar, flour, cinnamon and lemon juice to toss our pears into. Okay? Go ahead, cut the stem off, and then the great thing is now that the pear already has the seeds out, I can go ahead, cut. If I'm doing a lot of pears, I always take the seeds out and cut, put the cut side down on my cutting board, then they won't change color. So I have two beautiful pears, and I'm going to toss them with my flour, brown sugar, lemon juice, and cinnamon. Into the bowl we go. So we're going to lightly coat so you can see. And this is going to help with the color and also help with the thickening agent. We're going to add our dried cranberries in and now you can put it into your butter dish. I know it seems like a lot but don't forget this is only two pairs and it bakes down. Okay? Ready? Now let's make the topping. For our topping, we have flour, brown sugar, oatmeal in our bowl. We are now going to go ahead and add our butter. Now I can do this in a machine or, as Grandma Martin taught me, go ahead and do it with your hands. So we're going to go ahead and crumble this up. The pan that I did over here that you can see is a 9 inch pie plate. I went ahead, did the 6 cups and all, all the pears, all the cranberries and you can see how full it is to the top. Now the great thing is sometimes I have cranberries, sometimes I use cherries, frozen cherries 
and um, have a little bit of fun. You could add some lemon zest into this. Um, if you aren't a big cinnamon fan, go ahead and use some vanilla. Okay, so we have our crumble, and again, I could do this in a food processor um, if I have hands that are hot or if my butter is uh, very cold, fresh out of the refrigerator. So now I'm going to go ahead and put my crumble right on top. Yum. So I have extra crumble that I will go ahead, throw into a uh, freezer bag. Now, again, being married to Chef Michael Maddox, he likes to put almonds in here, pecans, walnuts, and add it to the oatmeal for something fun, something different. You can do that. Just cut back on your oatmeal. So when you're looking at your recipe, you have three-fourths cup of old-fashioned oats. Go ahead and bring it down to maybe a half a cup of oatmeal and a quarter cup of nuts. Or if you like more nuts, you could switch the two and just have a little bit of oatmeal. So this is our beautiful cobbler that will go into the oven, but I have one that I went ahead and made for you. So today for our comfort cozy food, we made a wonderful chorizo and chickpea soup for you to enjoy with some spinach and then we also have our wonderful pork ragu and like I said my big piece is cooking in the oven I probably won't be able to pull that out for another three to four hours how do you know it's ready what do you look for I'm looking for the meat to be fork tender put a knife into it and have it pull, have it fall apart, kind of like mine did. If there's a bone in it, the bone should come out very easily, right? Just yes. simply come out and it's cooked beautifully. Okay. The bone will come out. We went ahead and made our polenta, like Michael said, I could serve it soft or I can go ahead and make it ahead of time, put it into a small sheet pan and let it set up and then I could cut it and saute it and serve pieces like that or I could serve it with pasta. And then don't forget, this is our pear and cranberry cobbler. This is how it will look when it is um, ready to go into the oven. And then this one I went ahead and made, and it is um, your full recipe in a nine inch pie plate. So I hope you enjoy and start getting ready for comfort cozy food. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Is there any questions? I hope these are dishes that you can enjoy. I see that is stock better than broth. Stock is made by the bones of your product. So beef bones, chicken bones, fish bones, uh, lobster shells. Um, so there is uh, more gelatin in it. Broth is made by the meat alone. Both have mirepoix that you hear a lot, which is carrots, onions, and celery. It's always 50 parts onions to 25% celery to 25% carrots. And uh, bone broth is double the amount of bones to liquid. Um, thank you. I'm glad you uh, think everything looks good. Um, the great thing about all three items, and um, I... You know, again, everybody, I, I always say um, I'm action packed instead of busy. Everybody says they're busy. The great thing is I can make and freeze the soup and then I could go ahead and put it into a pan, heat it up and then add the chickpeas and the spinach. I could do, I could do that. I can also take the pork, like I said, I can make it on Sunday and go ahead and heat that up 
um, and have it in little containers and I can heat it up and make some pasta or I can take it for lunch when I go to work and then heat that up and eat it, you know, eat it there. It makes everybody jealous in the uh, break room Mm -hmm. and stuff. But um, yeah, it's just, it's something fun, something different and everything. And I I love polenta. Uh, My daughter uh, who does not eat meat and um, she, uh, um, she will eat dairy. I go ahead and add uh, spinach and boris on cheese to that polenta. And then you can just put your homemade tomato sauce or even your store-bought um, tomato sauce on top. And it's a great filling meal. It's something quick and easy. Quick polenta cooks faster than pasta. So um, both my uh, children, when they went to college, uh, definitely uh, became uh, pasta or polenta experts and were uh, wowing their friends with their polenta um, knowledge. And everything. Susan, um, yes, I have, well, I have a, a, a question and then a comment. The question is, you weren't crying when you chopped your onions. Do you have a secret? <laughs> oh, okay. So here we go. So the great thing is me, I cut my onions and clean them. So when you buy that three pound bag of onions, And you get home, cut them, clean them, put them in a Ziploc bag or a container and put it in your fridge. The gas will then release and the onion becomes cold. So when you take it out and you're cutting it, it's still cold. So then your eyes won't water. So that's what, because they're cold, it doesn't really yeah. go into your, that's when they're, oh, I'm yep. so tired of crying. <laughs> oh, and, and that's the, and even if I don't, let's say I got home, unloaded the groceries and I have my onions in with my potatoes and mm-hmm. everything where it's, um, you know, still warm, I go ahead and I will cut it, clean it and put it in the refrigerator and then I'll come back to it. So that's the key to your success. Okay, well, thank you. I enjoyed that tip very much. We have another question, but I just want to make a quick comment first that um, I kind of cheated. I made I made the uh, crisp, the cobbler, yeah. Sunday, but and I had people coming over and I had everything in the house but pears. So I used Granny Smith apples, and it was just it was delicious. I had the good cranberries. I had everything I needed, and I thought I don't want to go to the store. <laughs> And nope. it, it was very easy, just as you demonstrated. It wasn't just because sometimes people make things and they're complicated and hard, but I can vouch for that recipe. It's very easy, but Thank you. I mean, there was not a, a a little apple bit left in the pan. It was all gone. Okay. It was warm with vanilla ice cream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So Janet. Yes. Here's the honesty in our relationship. <laughs> so me, I didn't have enough pears or apples. So I just mixed them all up. Ooh, so, so cool. here's the best is I'm serving it. And my mother goes, I love this pear crisp. Mm-hmm. And my mother-in-law is looking and she goes, how did you get pear? Cause I have apple. <laughs> Cause so I good. must not have mixed them evenly. <laughs> That's funny. So I kind of had chunks and my mother looked at me and she goes, oh, she used leftover fruit. And I'm like, <laughs> only a mother the-. can say that. And that's what I was just going to say. Only my mother knows my tricks <laughs> yes. and everything. So, yeah. So you can definitely switch it out. But good. I'm glad you guys liked it and everything. It's oh, a lot it of fun. Delicious. It was delicious. Not a crumb left. Um, good. I, okay. So we have a question from Valerie. Is the soup non-freezable? If you have already added in chickpeas and spinach. No, you can definitely freeze it. I'm just me. I go ahead because again, I can put more of the uh, product into the container and then I can kind of stretch it. So if I have a small container, just that has the tomatoes and the chorizo and everything, if I go ahead, pull it out of the freezer and add a can of chickpeas and some spinach, now it's for two instead of one. So that's why I do it that way and everything. And too, it depends if my son's eating it, he wants black beans. If my daughter's eating it, she wants chickpeas. Oh, they can have what they want. They can add their own. Right. Okay. And then uh, someone wants to know, how do you clean your onions? 
So when I clean them, I go ahead and I, I put them in a um, vegetable wash. So I know a lot of people, um, when you see my demonstrations, I already have all my vegetables clean, but I fill my sink and you can purchase, there's many vegetable washes out there. You can purchase them and I wash all my vegetables and it sounds funny, but I go in order. So I pick things like, um, let's say carrots or uh, peppers, stuff that I know there's not as much dirt on it. And then mm -hmm. I finish with my onions because I still clean. And I know people are going, Susan, why are you cleaning it with the skin on? Well, when you cut on your cutting board and you cut through that skin, that dirt is going in your knife, on your board, and everything. So that's why, you know, we teach our students at the College of DuPage, where I teach and at home in my own practice, is I wash it. And then I go ahead and cut all my vegetables and clean them. Because if I save, say my onion skins, or the inside of my peppers, and I make a vegetable stock with all of that, then I don't have to wash them. Um, also, another good tip. <laughs> well, I, I just, again, I don't know about you, Janet, but me, my time in the kitchen, I want it to be, you know, we talk about it all the time, mise en place, everything in order. Yes. Yes. So when you're looking at that recipe, I would have done the same thing you did, Janet. I would have been, oh, hey, you know what? I don't have pears, but maybe I have canned pears. Maybe I have apples. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm home, I'm home. So mm -hmm. when I give a recipe and show you the method and technique, it's a guideline, you know, make it your own. Mm -hmm. Like, like I said, if Michael is cooking, he puts pecans in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, with polenta and everything, you know, it's an empty pallet. What can't it be? I've, I've, put it in a sheet pan after I made it and I've let it get cold and then I've cut it and I sauteed it as circles as a base. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you put the, the uh, ragu over top of it. Mm -hmm. And now you have that crispiness on the yeah. outside and then you cut into it and it's soft. And do you, you use know, do you use oil or, or um, I use, no, um, go ahead and use um, like a vegetable oil because there, if you have cheese and everything in it, if you used an olive oil, you'd burn very oh, fast. Okay. But yeah, but no, I've, you know, I sometimes add r roasted red peppers to it. I add, you know, just a great tomato sauce on top of it and it's dinner. You're done. It's, well, it's a peasant like meal. You meal uh, your, food, your food is great because it's flexible it's not like oh here's how you make it this is what you need. it has to be so exact like you said if you if you don't like chorizo use ground beef or something yeah. else chicken or just make it vegetarian mm -hmm. but um that's what i like about it and that's why when i thought i wanted to make a quick dessert and it was nice and easy and quick and i thought i think i'm gonna make this oh i don't have any pears oh but i have a whole bunch of apples so well and 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 again, you have that bowl of fruit mm -hmm. and, you know, you buy, oh, it looks so pretty. You know, if, if you, if everybody came over, you know, mm -hmm. I have a bowl of Granny Smith apples and then I have some Brayburn apples in there for the color, mm -hmm. you know, for the cuteness. Right. Well, okay. Again, welcome to my son and his girlfriend. They were doing caramel apples. So oh. they're eating all the Granny Smith apples. So now it's like all this red with like too green. And I'm like, okay, now I need to make a pie or go buy more apples. You know, my, my decorations ruined. And everything. <laughs> Those kids, you know, darn oh. kids, darn kids and think they're 22. I can't I yell know. at them, you know, I, and everything. My kids are even older and I still have to uh, whip them into shapes. <laughs> right. Right. But no, I'm glad, you know, again, these are simple recipes yeah. and, and, um, me, you saw that pan that I had, I put that in the oven, like I said, at the beginning of the video on, on Sunday, you know, in the morning before we go to church, cause you know, Michael and I do coffee service and everything. So we got to be to church early. So we'll sear off a whole chicken and put it in, in a low oven. And then away you go and you can just come back and deal with it later. And the house smells good when you walk in. <laughs> Definitely. And I'm ready for football. So yeah. There you go. You're set. Does anyone else have any more questions? 
for Chef Maddox. And oh, by the way, we got two chefs. We had Mike, we had Michael yeah. in there. We didn't yep. see him on camera, but no, you saw his out. arm. You saw his arm. Sometimes he's he's Van just- White to today. Yep. yep. <laughs> Definitely. Welcome to my cameraman. I couldn't do it without him. He is my camera and tech support. So definitely. But no, we look forward to coming out and seeing you guys soon and everything. But thank you for having us tonight and really appreciate it. So if there's no more questions, I'm going to let you guys go. So thank you. Thanks, Janet. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. Enjoy your holidays. Thanks.